Hey there, this is Math 8, Unit 5, Lesson 21 on Cylinders, Cones, and Spheres. And we're going to do a lot of work with today with volumes of all those shapes. So first of all, we had a little sphere argument where four students calculated the volume of a sphere with a radius of 9 centimeters, and they got four different answers. We have 108, 108 pi, 972, and 972 pi. So really there's some calculation errors that get you to 108 and someone forgot a pi or didn't include a pi. Then we have 972 with and without a pi. So let's see what we should get here. If the formula for the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed, and they gave us the radius of the value of 9, let's see what we should come up with. We have 4 thirds times pi times 9 cubed, okay? Well, 9 cubed is 9 times 9 times 9, which is a large number. So 4 thirds times pi, which is 729. If I divide 729 by 3, I end up with 4 pi and 243. So 729 divided by 3 is 243. And I multiply those together to come up with 972 pi. So in our case, we would say we agree with May with 972 pi. All right, and that's what we would say there. Tyler forgot to include the pi, which is what's wrong there. And this guy over here, not sure what, how they got 108. Maybe they just squared it. That's a possibility. Um, I have to do the math to figure out how they got that one there. That's probably a good guess. They probably just squared it instead of doing it times three, or three, three times to the third power, sorry. Next, we have the sphere's radius. The volume of the sphere of the radius r is v equals 288. That's the volume of the whole thing. This statement is true, 288 pi equals 4 thirds r to the third pi. So what is the value of r? So let's solve this to see if we can figure it out. We have 288 pi equals 4 thirds r to the third pi. One thing I can do since there's a pi on both sides is I can eliminate the pi's, don't worry about them. Now I'm gonna multiply this side by three, first of all. So 288 times three is 864. That's gonna equal four r to the third. Now I'm gonna divide both sides by four to get rid of the four. 864 divided by four is 216. That's gonna equal r to the third. So I need to know a number that I multiply by itself and by itself again to get 216. So a couple things to kind of keep in mind. If I did two times two times two, I'd end up at eight, right? If I did three cubed, I end up with 27. So we're gonna grow quickly there, right? If I do four times four times four, I end up at 64. When I do the five times five times five, I end up at 150, I wanna get 216. And six times six times six is 216. So just kind of maybe, you don't have to memorize this necessarily, but have them kind of an idea in mind of about where it would take you. So kind of know what should I do? This is the, gonna be also the cubed root of that, but you can also just kind of recognize that, well, hey, six cubed gets you there. So what's the radius gonna be? Six. All right, the next activity you did in class today was another info gap activity where you and a partner had some problem cards and data cards and you worked together with your class to talk about the information and to work towards solving that problem there by asking your partner for specific information and then just being very clear in what things you're looking for to solve those different kinds of problems there. So if you're doing that in the class, then take a moment to do that and pause the video and then come back to the next activity once you're ready to move on. Okay, our next activity is activity four called the right fit. And in this activity, what we're given is we're given a cylinder here that has a diameter of three centimeters. Remember that's a diameter of three centimeters, which makes the radius equal to 1.5, right? And I just jot these notes down right away as I'm just as I see it, so I don't remember, don't forget about it later. The height is eight. Fill the water. Decide what figures described here, if any, could hold all of the water. That's what we're looking for. So let's see how much water goes in here. This cylinder has a volume of pi times the radius squared times the height. Right? Pi r squared is the area of the base times the height. Now our pi is still pi, our radius is 1.5 because they gave us diameter of three, so half of that's 1.5. And then we're gonna multiply by the height, which it says was eight. Okay, so eight times 1.5 squared, 1.5 squared uh, is gonna be 18 pi. Okay, so the volume of this shape is 18 pi. 
So as we look at these other shapes, we have to decide if they can hold all 18 pi amount of water there, okay? Just for the sake of if you were wondering, this is 18 times also 3.14. So in terms of a number that would hold, it should be about 56 centimeters cubed, okay? So if we have to get a, like a number without pi. So okay, taking a look at the cone, we have a cone with a height of eight. Now a cone's formula is one third times pi times the radius, here's the radius of three, it's three squared times the height of eight, all right? So three squared is nine, nine divided by three is three, and three times eight is 24, so that becomes 24 pi. That's greater than 18, so that's gonna be okay. Cylinder, cylinder we have a diameter of six, which makes our radius equal to three and a height of two. So we'll do pi times the radius, three squared, times the height of two. Three squared is nine, nine times two is 18. So we have 18 pi, 18 pi can hold 18 pi, so that's gonna be okay. Right, take a prism. Prisms are gonna be three times four times eight. Three times four is gonna 12, and 12 times eight is gonna be equal to 96. And there's no pi here, right? So it's good to look back up here at the 56. 96 is greater than 56 uh, centimeters cubed, so that's gonna also be okay. Now into the sphere, we have four thirds of pi times the radius, which is two cubed. So two times two times two is eight. So we end up with 32 over three pi. And 32 over three is about 10.6 pi. All right, now that's gonna be less than 18 pi. So we would say no to this one. So no to the sphere. The sphere is not gonna work, but the rest of the shapes do work there. All right, we're gonna skip the are you ready for more? And again, the lesson summary for the day really is just reviewing the formula for our sphere and knowing that we can find the other links or dimensions if we know parts of it. All right, pause there, take a moment to do your homework, and let's come back and check it together. All right, number one. All right, first of all, this one, I'm gonna go through how to solve this here. My initial teacher answer key, at least one from this year's series, uh, I think has a wrong answer, but let's talk through the answer together. It says a scoop of ice cream has a three inch radius, all right? So we have a scoop of ice cream, all right? It has a three inch radius. How tall should the ice cream cone of the same radius be in order to fill and contain all ice cream? So we have a cone with a three inch radius there. We wanna know how tall it should be in order to get all the ice cream in it, okay? So let's find the volume of the ice cream scoop itself. That's gonna be four thirds times pi times the radius. The radius is three and cubed. In my teacher's guide, it had listed right here 1.5. It'd be 1.5 if that was given as a diameter, but it wasn't. So maybe another um, book has it like that way. For my problem here, I have a three inch radius, so I plug that in right there. Okay, so this one is three times three times three. We could eliminate one of the threes by thinking about it being divided by three, whatever. This works out to be 36 pi. So the volume of the scoop of ice cream is 36 pi. We wanna make sure that our cone can hold all 36 pi, the volume of the ice cream in it. So we're gonna set that equal to the formula for a cone. The cone is gonna be one third times pi times the radius, which is three squared times a height, which we don't know. Now we have pi on both sides, so we can kind of eliminate the pi. So we have 36 equals one third times nine times h. Nine divided by three is gonna be three h. So 36 equals three times h, divide both sides by three. All right, and what we have left, 36 divided by three is 12. So the height of the cone here should be 12 to make that work. Again, my answer key said six, but six works if the radius is 1.5. 
So that's two different things there. So that's not what my answer is because my radius was three. All right, hopefully I did that right there. Number two, calculate the volume of the following shapes. Again, from information, we're gonna do it both in terms of pi and then approximate pi with 3.14. All right, so just kind of plugging things in. Here we have a diameter of six, which means our radius equals three for the sphere. So we're gonna plug four thirds times pi times the radius cubed. All right, four thirds pi times three cubed. Well, look right there, we just did that one. There it is right there, it's 36 pi. So to make that in terms of a, a number, and again, this is inches, so we'd call it inches cubed there to label it. This would be 36 times 3.14, which equals 113.04 inches cubed. All right, so those are my two answers right there. Cylinder. Height of six, diameter of six, which means our radius equals three. So that's gonna be pi times the radius squared times the height. So three squared is nine times six is 54 pi. And then if I do 54 times 3.14, I'd end up with 169.56 inches cubed. So I have an answer and an answer. And then finally here, the next one. We have a cone, right, with a height of six and a radius of three. So we're gonna do one third pi times the radius, three squared times the height. So three squared is nine, nine divided by three is three, three times six is 18, so we end up with 18 pi. So 18 times 3.14 for value of pi is equal to 56.52 inches cubed. How are these three volumes related? Well, we know that the volume of the cylinder is greater than the volume of the sphere, which is greater than the volume of the cone. We also know this volume here um, of the cylinder, the 169.56, is gonna be equal to the volume of the sphere, 113.04, plus the volume of the cone. Now my numbers may not add up perfectly, um, but it, it might actually, let's see, nine, actually it does, we're okay. <laughs> Adds up perfectly because why? This is two thirds plus the one third to get me to the whole amount of the cylinder there. All right, next one, we have a coin operated bouncy ball dispenser. It has a large glass sphere that holds many spherical balls. So you have a giant glass sphere, right? That holds a bunch of balls in it. The large glass sphere has a radius of nine inches. Each bouncy ball has a radius of one inch. Bunch of bunch of balls. When we turn the page here, we see that our bouncy balls, there are 243 of them. So let's redraw our picture real quick here. All right, we have our sphere, looks like this, has a radius of nine. Then we have a whole bunch of one inch centimeter or radius bouncy balls in there. 243 are in there. What proportion of the large glass sphere's volume is taken up by the bouncy balls? So let's find the volume of the large sphere. That's gonna be four thirds pi times the radius, which is nine cubed. Okay, so a rather large number once again. So, gotta do some math here. So nine times nine times nine. You end up, if you use your calculator, what you end up doing is doing this. Four times nine times nine times nine divided by three pi. Right, that's nine cubed times that one there. When you work that out, what you end up getting is 972 pi is the volume of the large sphere where everything's inside of. Now, for the balls, the balls are have a radius of four thirds, or volume of four thirds pi, radius is one, so it's just that, that's the one ball. But now there are 243 of those. So now when I do 243 times four divided by three, I have actually a volume of 324 pi for the balls. So in terms of proportion here, for how much space is filled up, 324 pi over the side, the volume of the container, these are the balls over the container, is gonna get you 0 0.33, or approximately 33% of the space inside the large gl uh, glass sphere is filled up with the balls. Okay, and that's pretty much it. 
Number four, a farmer has a tank for cows in the shape of a cylinder with a radius of seven and a height of three. The tank comes equipped with a sensor to alert the farmer to fill it up when it falls below 20%. So whenever it gets to there, there's some alarm or sensor that says, hey, you're getting low. All right. So let's find the volume of, we want to find out when that's going to turn on. So how much water is there? That's what we're trying to figure out. The volume of the whole thing is going to be pi r squared h. And again, that's pi, which is equal to, let's give it a number here, okay? Because we want to have a number when we're done here, not a pi value. So we're going to do 3.14. Our radius, it said, was 7, so 7 squared. And our height was 3. So we have 3.14 times 49 times 3. And when I do all that work right there, that's going to come out to 461.58. So that's how much um, uh, water is going to be in the entire tank. Now the sensor is going to go off when I'm down to 20% of that. Let's write that out kind of in words for you to see real quick. So the sensor goes off when I have 20% of 461.58. So 20% can be rewritten as a decimal, 0 0.20 of its multiplication, and 461.58. So 0 0.2 times 4618 is going to be equal to 92.316. And again, you could round it. This could be 46.2, but that's just, you know, wh whatever you got there is good. So that's how much water is indicated by the shaded area, which is 20% of the container's capacity. All right, and that is it for today. One more for this unit, and then we'll see you next time.